Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and we're gonna take a quick look at the new Photos app from Google. Now this for me was one of the most exciting announcements from the Google I.O. 2015 keynote, not just because it's an update to the service, but because it was available the same day as the announcement. Now one thing I did wanna show, when you first fire up the app, you're gonna get this welcome notice. Apparently we're only going to get unlimited storage at a high quality, which means for those of us shooting on super high resolution image sensors, our photos and videos are gonna get scaled down, but hopefully not in an overly destructive fashion. But I was happy to see that if we want to upload at original quality, our quota, the amount of storage we have to play with, has just been increased. Once you go through the process of getting your Photos app set up and once you're actually in the app, the entire navigation of this is now in three major panes. So this is the Photos pane and we can kind of scroll through that. If we slide to the right, we're gonna end up in the collections pane. And this is divided up by the folders you set up and then also the collections that Google will put together for you through the Auto Awesome service. For example, if we scroll up, you'll see I have two of these friends giving collections. Now this one right here is the actual folder that I set up to collect all of these photos. And this one here with the 12 moments is actually set up by Google as part of the older Auto Awesome feature. And tapping on one of these collections, we can then go and scroll through the individual folders that we set up from that collection. So that's the collection folder, if we slide one, we get back to the photos view. And then if we slide again, we'll get into the assistant. Now this is taking over for the auto awesome feature. And the assistant is gonna help you organize photos. It's gonna help you create movies and collages. It's really cool to see Google expanding on their automated features and giving you a little bit more control over the kinds of output that you wanna create. Now focusing on the photos view for just a bit, we have a number of really cool intuitive gestures and controls that help us organize and move through our collection of photos and videos. For example, we can see all of these photos are in sort of a compact view as we go day by day. But gestures like pinching, will help us slide into a more compact view. So now this is the entire month of May, this is the entire month of April, we're in more of a month view. And then we can slide in again for an even more hyper-condensed year view. So doing a reverse pinch, and someone dropped me a comment down below in this video, I need a good phrase for that. Because you know everyone understands pinch to zoom, but pulling your fingers apart to expand takes a little bit more explanation. Anyway, uh, reverse pinch gets us back into this monthly view. Another reverse pinch gets us back into the same uh, daily photo view. But we can go one more to expand all of these photos for an even nicer photo scrolling view. And performance is surprisingly snappy. Now this is over Wi-Fi, but most of these photos are up in the cloud as I didn't take a lot of these photos on my LG G4. And if we want to scroll through photos really quickly, we can see a time and date view by pulling on this little toggle right here. And then we can also do things like contextual search. So when you hit that little search icon, you can start searching for people and they're gonna start cataloging all of the people in your photos. Like for example, I'm pretty good buddies with Abraham Lincoln there. We can also look for things by places. These are from some of my recent trips to the Getty, down to Santa Monica. We did a vacation in Vancouver. And we can also refine our search by things. And uh, apparently I take a lot of photos of cars, flowers, and food. I wanna see, cause I know I've got a really great picture of a moon. So let me search for the word moon. Oh, that's phenomenal. So any photos where Google thinks that you might have a picture of the moon, you can do a very simple search just for the word moon, M-O-O-N, that spells moon, and it's gonna scan through your photos to try and find contextually that word based on other image cues. And it works really well because these are the three photos I was thinking of in my collection that I've taken of the moon that I'm really proud of. This is a handheld shot from the NX1 with a regular consumer zoom lens and I thought it came out phenomenal. And it, obviously again, I did not take this picture on the LG G4, it's streaming over Wi-Fi. I've got really quick access to zooming in on that photo, manipulating that photo and then backing back out uh, we can go to an older photo. This is one of the very first photos I ever took of the moon. You can see it's really blurry because this is on an old camera. This is from 2009. But it fires right up just as if it were stored locally on the phone. Now while sliding panels back and forth makes sense, we can also tap on this little hamburger icon right here to get into other controls on our photo collections. So just like we could slide to the right and the left to get to the assistant and to the collections, we can also check out shared links, different folders across different devices. So if you have multiple devices going on, you can sync up the photo folders on various devices and you can see them all through this view here. You can scan through your trash or empty your trash. We can also get into settings, just wanna see what we've got in here. We've got a, a backup and sync. Uh, we've got suggest new creations. This is again, a lot like the old auto awesome tools are gonna to be found in some of these expanded settings. And just as we saw in our search features, having this toggled right here will definitely help if your 
regularly taking photos with you and your friends or various objects and items, you're, you're regularly taking photos of cars, for example, grouping similar images together will definitely help you organize what's going on. And then if you've already been uploading photos to Google Drive, this will make sure that your Drive photos and videos will show up in this app. Now, I'm very much concerned about privacy, so I opted to remove geolocation info from my photos and videos that are shared publicly. And you can go in and customize your location settings from this menu as well. In addition to all of the great organizational tools this app now provides, we also have some really cool content creation tools. We can create a new album if we want to upload a bunch of photos to that, but we can also create movies, stories, animations, and collages. So starting out with a collage, I'm just going to tap, or you know what, let's just tap on two so we can keep it simple. Let's hit create. It's going to prepare those files, and bam. So I'm going back to look at the Moto X. I can create a really cool collage. I can come down here and edit color and lighting. I can do the auto awesome if I just want Google to take over. This is very much like the uh, collage tool that you'll find in Picasa on the desktop. We can play with photo filters, which are apparently all named after Roman gods. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, I kinda, no, Ariel's way too washed out. Uh, Triton, you know, I'm not really a big fan of filters. So instead, I would probably adjust you know, via color, we can do a quick little pop. Uh, if we want to pull in the corners, we can do a vignette, kind of spotlight what's going on in the middle there. It's not quite as full featured as the newest update to Instagram, but they're nice tools to help us augment our photo creation tools, especially in the middle of creating a collage. Now, creating an animation, this would obviously work better if I had a whole series of photos that were shot one right after the other, but let's just see what happens if we create some kind of GIF, and we'll just do these six photos here. So let's hit create going to prepare those files, creating animation, and then it's just going to cycle through these photos. And of course, from this view, we can get a little more info on what you've actually created, what phone it was shot from. Uh, we can delete it, or we can go instantly into sharing it on some type of service. So if it supports that, it's going to send a link to one of these options here through Gmail, through Google+, if I want to send it to Facebook. And then people can see your masterful creation from those windows. But I'm going to go ahead and delete it. If you played with Auto Awesome in the past, the story mode can be kind of a fun way to organize a whole grouping of photos. So let me, again, we'll play with these right here. Let's go ahead and create. It's going to prepare these files. It's creating the story. And so it pulls location information and then contextual information from those photos to send us on a storybook style journey. So I shot these in Reseda. That's actually accurate. I didn't put that information into the story. Uh, Google pulled that on its own. And now I can slide through this story here. So uh, Juan Carlos, that's me. And these are photos from here. And we can kind of slide back through. Here are the other six. You can tap on each one. And from here, we can also put in our own descriptions. But if you've already put in descriptions on a series of photos, like say you had a photo album and you wrote little notes on each photo, these little notes would show up in these descriptions here. And the end, Juan Carlos Bagnell's Friday afternoon in Reseda has come to a close. And lastly, the feature I think a lot of people are going to be having the most fun playing with is going to be this movie feature. Let's tap on this. And again, let's pick a couple different photos <laughs> instead of the same ones. Let's just pick some flower photos. I take a lot of flower photos here. Uh, we'll pick that one and that one. Oh, and we got to do these two. Okay, so I've got eight photos, and we're going to hit Create. And it's got to download some of the photos because they're not all on the phone. And now we can hit Play on a really super cool movie. Ah, oh, they picked Beethoven. And it does a really good job of sort of panning through each photo, sliding through the scene, doing a little zoom in. Kind of playing along with the music and then it fades out super artistically. It saved me tens of minutes as opposed to setting up my own photo slideshow movie. But what's cool is we can go in and we can pick all of these different themes. We can do a very natural version. It's a lot closer to the actual photos that I really shot. I can do an eight millimeter film where it's gonna kind of pull in the corners. It's gonna be a more rectangular frame. Do action. I don't know why action is super washed out with kind of ugly colors, but sure, if you wanna look like you're in a Starsky and Hutch rerun, that's cool too. Okay, so we have to see what punk looks like. 
<laughs> Apparently, punk is very bad, monochromatic, Liechtenstein dotted, sort of worn out and rough looking, which I guess, yeah, that makes sense for punk. So we've got all these different filters, but we can also come in and pick up, pick through a whole bunch of different music choices. So Google's gonna look at your photos and they're gonna suggest some music, but we can also go through music you've recently used. We can go through dramatic music. If you want Ride of the Valkyries, you can, you can pick that. But they've got different choices for electronic, for reflective, rockin', upbeat. You can go through and listen like what jazz in Paris might sound like. Ooh, that's funky and Parisian. I enjoy that. I too am a hip and groovy dude. Uh, 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 uh. That's enough of that. And then at any time we can come to this little film strip here and we can add a title card, we can go through these individual photos, and long pressing on a photo gives us the ability to move them around, so I can split those photos up. Let's say I want yellow up over here, that's kind of nice there, we'll go ahead and keep those changes. And then it's gonna reorder those photos for the movie that we've already created. And we can go ahead and give this a name, we'll call it Test Movie, because I am not feeling particularly original right now. Go ahead and save that. And now we can export this video, we can delete this video, or we can share this video again through a link on any type of service that we want to share it on. It's gonna take a little second here to render. It's almost done. That's a really nice little animation creeping out to show us that it's almost done completing this movie. And now we can share it on all of these other services. I can upload it to Dropbox. I can move it to Instagram. I can upload it to YouTube. Again, through the, the whole sharing app integration power of Android, it's really easy to offload these various creations. So folks, I am really digging this new Photos app by Google. They've definitely borrowed some of the UI characteristics that we've seen from Apple Photos, and I think for the better. This is definitely an upgrade over what we were using before with that weird schism between photos and galleries and then Google Plus online photo integration. This already looks and feels like it's gonna be much easier to use especially for those of us that have to move back and forth between various devices. Say you've got a phone and a tablet or two phones or members of your family are also sharing a number of photos and videos and stuff like that. Uh, having one service like this should be easier to help catalog and collect all of that cool content that you guys create. So one important housekeeping note, let me slide back out here into my multitasking. Now this new Photos app is not going to come as an automatic update. It's now a separate app in the Google Play App Store. Look for Photos by Google Link. Go and download it. It will replace the Photos app that you you already have, but it won't come as its own standalone upgrade just yet. It was just released to the Play Store today, the day that I shot this video. So get out there, folks. Run, don't walk to Google Play to get this new update for the Photos app. I'm really positive on the service. I'm going to be playing with it a lot more, especially just using it again as a secondary backup to the uh, photo uploading that I do through OneDrive. It's always nice to have a little extra redundancy and some fun new features to play with with photo and video creation. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe for more videos and reviews like these and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my videos on social sites like Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and the Googles Plus. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.